Stay up, ball. Stay up. Sit down. Well, if you ever think golf is a hard game and you'd love to make it just that little bit simpler, you need to watch this video. You see, in all the years that I've played this game, I've learned one thing, and that is that, uh, well, there are several ways in which to score at golf. There are several ways in which to be good at golf, and they don't all necessarily mean, uh, well, playing the kind of the obvious route. That's right on it. Right on it, sit down, ball. Oh, now the traditional route that I'm referring to is probably the way you put your bag together, the clubs you choose, what are kind of, what are the norm? I played a game of golf at the weekend and uh, well, I was taught a hard lesson and realized that, uh, well, maybe, just maybe, just being a bit, a bit blind to what opportunities there are out there by opening the mind a little bit. You see that shot I just played? Well, it was with a 54 degree wedge. And why did I play that? Well, because that's what I'm told to play. That's the shot that I would expect to play. And that's the kind of club I would obviously reach for. Is that a mistake? You see, last weekend, well, I was taught a proper hard lesson in golf, because while I was playing all kinds of fancy shots from around the green, flop shots, chip and run, one with a little bit of a check, never really succeeding in getting up and down. I played against someone who had a much more straightforward game. He had a real interesting product in the bag and he seemed to do this no matter what and that was stick that ball to within two foot, three foot from anywhere in and around the green and made his up and down far more often than I did with a full bag of wedges. And after he uh, duly gave me a good hide and I took a little bit of a closer look into his bag and the exact club he was using, it was exactly the same club every time. No matter where he landed, in terms of uh, short of the green, he would always reach for exactly the same club and play a number of different shots with it, but ultimately get the ball very close to hole virtually every time. Right, we need a bit of a cut here if we're gonna get close, but how brave can we be? That's a good line, you know, that's a real good line. Now tonight I have took a wander up to my old stomping ground, I'm north up uh, golf club in North Wales. It's just about seven miles from Chester, it's Parkland course. I'm going to be spending a bit more time here over the next few months, so uh, we'll be doing a little bit more filming here, but it's a gorgeous evening. But the question I have for you is before I make the reveal, have a guess what that club was that he had in his bag? Oh my word, don't go in. And it nearly did. It's just run a little bit by that club that he had in his bag. Well, it was one of these. It's a 45 degree chipper. Yeah, a chipper. Now we are all, or most of us, look at one of these things. And well, we think we're too good for it. I'm not sure we are. Oh my word. That's ridiculous. You see, the thing is, I've played this chipper from a number of different lies, a number of different distances from the hole, but essentially all around the green. The type of scenario where I would be taking all types of wedges to execute those shots. And as you've just seen, this thing does one thing really, really well. That's not just hole it, because that's a bonus. I've not played here for a while. I used to play a kind of like a six iron maybe five iron or hybrid. Well, a little bit, white tees are right at the very back, another maybe 20 yards back. So I think I'll try six iron. Can we get one down the middle? Yeah, I think that'll do. Don't go in again. Oh my word, you know what? It nearly did. But what it does so well is exactly what just happened there and on that previous hole where we chipped in. And that's first of all, it gets the ball rolling at the hole. But let's be honest, if you're gonna hole a chip, then that's the first thing you've gotta do. But it does it extremely easy. And you'll see the stroke that I'm using is an extremely easy putting style chip motion, which again is copycat 
I want this guy that I played with at the weekend. He made it look so, so simple. And that's all he continued to do. Chipper in hand, put in motion, extended the length of that swing, depending on obviously how far he was from the hole. And he just got that ball rolling at the hole. So for all my fancy flop shots that, uh, well, really difficult to judge length and distance, for all the times where I was going to throw it in low and check it up and I thought it was such a clever little golfer doing that kind of thing, I just couldn't get anywhere near a man and his chipper. You see, the thing is, if you think about it for one minute, what is the easiest club that you've got in your bag to use? It's your putter. Arguably, you'd be struggling if you managed to duff a, uh, well, a putt. So, it stands to reason that effectively, this is a putter with some loft on it. So you do nothing else apart from execute your putting stroke, which we just said you can't seem to get wrong. And all of a sudden, you've got a club in the bag that assists you with a part of the game that can be quite tricky. It's a no brainer, really. Now, don't get me wrong. We all know this club also has its limitations and faced with a shot like this, and that's carrying over a bunker. Not the greatest of lies. Well, I'd much prefer to have other wedges in the bag. But we'll give this one a go. But I also realise that with a bit of practice, you could also start to execute maybe a bit more of a variety of a shot. Do you know what? That's not bad either. Chase up. Chase up just a little bit short. And you'll see a couple of shots that I played earlier on the previous screen. All's not rosy in the garden. This thing just doesn't make you a fantastic chipper all of a sudden. A little bit of practice is needed. You can see these two have just run on a little bit. But the thing for me is, this almost acts as a training aid in simplifying that chipping stroke. So when you get used to this, maybe you'd start to develop and move with a bit more confidence into those more lofted wedges. Now the irony is, this club I had in the garage that I reviewed, well, possibly two and a half, maybe three years ago on the channel. And I pretty much said exactly what I'm saying in this video, as I did then. But you know what? It still never got in my bag. And I pretty much stuck everything stiff as well that day. We're weird people as golfers, aren't we? Oh my word. That is inches from going in again. Wow. Yeah, literally inches away, right past the hole again. And that's what it does really well, like I said at the beginning of the video, so I won't repeat that. Getting that ball online, simplifying the job in hand. Look, it's hard enough when you're faced with a 400 yard par four, 500 yard par five. You've got to execute a number of different shots to try and get that ball somewhere near the hole. But when you're getting in and around that green, then the last thing you want to do is mess things up when that short game goes astray. So if you are struggling and looking for some solutions, yes, you need to work on technique, but why not consider giving one of these a go? Because honestly, it simplifies the stroke a huge amount. It gives you plenty more options and can build some confidence and that can only be a good thing. Yet again, three years on, put the chipper in the bag and amazed just how well it's performed. But as you know, I'm still not sure it'll ever get in my bag. See you later.